Ooh, it is a cold 10 degrees here in Michigan. We have got a ton of snow. But today I'm gonna talk about uh, brood breaks as a way of controlling for Varroa. In my last video, I mentioned po using post-summer solstice queens in order to increase your honey crop and have better and stronger hives going into winter. So today I'm gonna pair all of that knowledge you learned with a new way of controlling for Varroa. Man, I go by all kind of names. Yo, my nicknames got nicknames. So the way the mite cycle works is throughout the season, they slowly build up and reproduce and um, the numbers get higher and higher and higher with them really taking hold of the colony in around July. This is when you see the mite numbers will really start to skyrocket um, in comparison to the bees, especially because this is also when the bees usually start to decrease their numbers as it is after the summer solstice. So they start preparing for winter. Well, this is also when the bees start making their winter bees. And what signals this is when the pollen starts to slow down, this is actually when they're, the, they're, uh, the bees are signaled to start making winter bees. Because actually, whenever you see um, any brood cells that appear dry, so meaning that white milky substance that you usually see in cells, this is called brood food. And when the pollen starts to decrease, the protein level starts to decrease, meaning there's less brood food in the cells, so they can appear dry. And actually, this is a really good thing because this is what signals the bees to produce more vitelligenin. And the reason that this is important is vitelligenin is essentially their energy reserve and is what differentiates winter bees from summer bees. So it's really important that they're fed this deficient diet because otherwise they're not they're not going to produce uh, turn into winter bees and produce more vitelligenin. So note to self, don't ever feed pollen in the fall time because you could actually hurt your hives rather than help them. But anyways, so July is the time that you really need to start thinking about your mites and what you're going to do to get those numbers down. Because like I said, this is when the colonies are going to start producing winter bees. So it's really essential to have healthy winter bees that are not one sick and two have mites on them that have made them weaker so that they're strong enough to make it through the winter time. But this is also the perfect time to requeen as I discussed in my last video as this is after the summer solstice. So when you put in a post summer solstice queen, she's gonna build up super fast and have a really strong colony for winter time. But also when you do this, you're going to have a brood break. And what this brood break does is it pretty much disrupts the cycle of the mite reproducing so that it just completely nips them in the butt and pretty much makes them all collapse so that the mite levels go down. So it's a pretty cool way of controlling for, for Varroa because you're killing two birds with one stone, killing the Varroa while also preparing your, your hive for winter by putting in a post-summer solstice queen so it can build up quickly. But okay, so how exactly does the brood break work and how exactly does it actually kill Varroa? So what happens is when you go through a broodless period around two weeks that um, there's absolutely no brood in the cells, all of the brood or all of the mites are then forced onto the bees and what happens is then when that queen finally starts laying again all those mites hurry up and they run into all of the cells and what ends up happening is there's not enough hemolymph or bee blood in the in the young larva that's in those cells to support all of the mites that are now rushing into them because there will be multiple mites going into each cell um, so there's not enough food to go around. So then when those when those cells are then capped, all of the mites pretty much starve to death and end up dying. Now you are sacrificing your first round of brood when doing this, which is okay because then when you get your second round of brood, they're not going to be infected with Varroa and they're going to be able to grow strong and healthy. Now something that I've noticed is that the bees already naturally want to supersede their queen in July and I've always wondered if maybe this was the bees natural way of controlling for Varroa on their own um, because like I said this is the time that you really want to 
control for your mites and also using those post summer solstice queens to help your honey crop and um, help your winter survival rate like i keep saying but okay so don't mind me changing scenery it is honestly so so cold outside i can barely even think because my cheeks are frozen so moving to my car to keep warm but okay so i do just want to show you guys this chart um i've talked about this book a couple times because it is absolutely great it is called ots queen rearing um by mel disselkin um i hope i said that right i might not have pronounced it right but so if i did i'm sorry but um okay so in it he has this really good chart um pretty much showing what happens with the mites and their reproduction and life cycle with also the cycle of the bees and also the cycle of the queen. So it really, it lays out really well um, what happens when you do do a brood break. And what it shows is that on the eighth day of um, eight day old larva, this is the last day for mites to enter a cell. And so all those mites, like I said, that, they, that were on bees, they're going to rush into these cells. And when they do that, they, um, it is then sealed and there's not enough food to go around. So like I said, they end up starving to death. And from what I've been told by numerous of my beekeepers, this actually really, really cuts back the mites. Um, I did experiment with this last year on two of my colonies and they had really low mite numbers all year um well after i did it because of it so it definitely works in killing mites and is a natural way of doing it so that you're not putting chemicals on your bees as since i said in one of my last videos the chemicals actually do affect our bees um even the organic acids and whatnot it can negatively impact them uh so this is a more natural way of doing that okay so how would you do a brood break so for backyard beekeepers it'd be super simple just to remove your old queen and have the colony make their own queen um you can do this by just removing the queen and then they will choose larva to make into a queen themselves. or you could use um one of what mel talks about um as his ots notching method where he just notches a cell that they then turn into a queen um get this book if you want to learn more about it but so when you do this the the colony is gonna go around three weeks without brood what will happen is as they're producing that queen all of the last bit of brood will hatch and then they'll go through around two weeks of absolutely no eggs no brood no nothing in the colony as that queen then um grows and gets bigger and gets ready for her mating flight then when she comes back, she'll start laying those eggs and that first round of brood will be sacrificed to the mites. Um, so this would be a perfect way for backyard beekeepers. It's super easy, kind of like no hassle, no fuss. You just kind of take out your queen and then just let the colony do their thing or you do the notching method like I talked about. Um, but for bigger operations, it's a little bit more tricky to do this, just in my opinion. So another way of doing this is you could add a virgin queen. You could take out your old queen and then add in and introduce a virgin queen. And the reason I say a virgin queen and not a mated queen is something that I learned. So, um... When we all first started beekeeping, I'm sure a lot of us thought that the queen kind of controlled everything in the colony, which actually she doesn't. There's actually what's called alpha bees in the colony, and they're who call the shots and make all the decisions in the colony. Um, so in order for the method of using a post-summer solstice queen to actually work, you have to convince the alpha bees. Um, so something that I learned and I've been reading about is... So if you were to add a mated queen into a colony, the alpha bees, they don't go through that period of having a virgin queen and thinking, oh, hey, we don't have any brood. It doesn't make the alpha bees change their mind in terms of um, how they prepare for the winter. So when you, even if you add a mated queen post-summer solstice, those alpha bees still may slow down that queen as if she's the old queen. Um, and slow down her laying. But when you add a virgin queen or you have them make their own queen, these alpha bees know that they made a new queen and um, that they went through this time of no brood. So it kind of kicks in that drive for them to then uh, push her to produce more bees and lay more eggs. Um, so this is an essential part to the whole entire method. 
that I've been reading about. So if you add a virgin queen, 10 to 12 days later, she'll be maiden and she'll start laying eggs again. And like I said, all those mites will try to go into the cells, they'll starve to death and they'll die. But anyway, so I've been working out my plan for the upcoming season um, this year for bee season. It's coming really, really quick. So I hope this video helped you in helping you figure out what you're going to do with your varroa mites and also your colonies this summer season. And I hope you guys are keeping warm. Like I said, it is crazy cold here in Michigan, so I cannot wait for spring. But anyways, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're keeping warm and I'll see you in the next one.